everybody, this is Mrs. Arbucci, fourth grade at Paradise Canyon. I am gonna be showing you partitioning rectangles in solving multiplication problems. This is found in unit four. So partitioning rectangles is one strategy that students can use when solving multiplication problems that are larger than the multiplication facts that they should have memorized in fourth grade. Partitioning rectangles can be used to solve area problems as well as other multiplication problems that are not area problems. So I'm just gonna write the formula for area so we keep that in mind. Area equals length times width. So if I have a problem, let's say Maya is attempting to build a tile floor that is eight feet wide by 24 feet long, and she needs to find out what the area of that tile floor would be. Uh, using the area formula, it would be A equals, oops, messed up. A equals 24 times eight. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a rectangle. On this side, I'm gonna write the eight. And then I'm gonna think, what are the multiplication problems that I have memorized or multiplication problems that are using numbers that are easier to work with? Now, I obviously don't have memorized 24 times eight, but I do know what 12 times eight is. So I'm going to divide this rectangle into two smaller rectangles. I still have my eight on the left-hand side, and I'm gonna divide that 24 into two rectangles that have a length of 12. So 12 plus 12 equals my total down here of 24. Now I'm gonna take the eight on the left and multiply eight times 12. And I'm gonna put the product, which is 96 here. I'm gonna do the same thing for the second rectangle, eight times 12 again, with a product of 96. Now to find the entire area, I'm gonna take both products, 96 plus 96, add them together to get 100 92 square feet, and that's the total area. So Maya's tile floor has an area of 192 square feet. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go to another page, and I still want you to think about the same uh, floor problem that Maya had. She was creating a tile floor that was eight feet wide by 24 feet long and I showed you one way to partition the rectangle with those numbers. I'm gonna show you a different way using the same numbers, but uh, partitioning the rectangle um, differently. So here we go. I'm gonna make a rectangle just like I did last time. Last time, if you remember, I put an eight on the left-hand side, and this time I want to split my eight into two fours. So I still have a width of eight, but I'm just splitting it into two. I'm gonna keep the 12 and 12 that add up to 24. So this part's gonna look the same. I'm gonna have 12 here and 12 here. You can even put a plus here. So we remember that they're going to be added together to get the totals. So now I do the same thing. I take one of the fours on the left-hand side four times 12 at the top gives me a product of 48. And since every single one of these rectangles has the same two factors, I can write the same product in the other three. So I've got a 48 here, 48 here, 48 here. And I got that 48 the same way each time, four times 12. So now I'm, I have four products that I now need to add together. 
I'm going to do that over here on the right side. 48, 48, 48, 48. These are all partial products of the whole product. I'm going to add them together. And when I do that, I get the same area, 192 square feet. Ooh, look at that writing. Okay, so I'm sure you remember that in the beginning of this video, I told you that the partitioning rectangle strategy could be used to solve area problems and problems that uh, aren't area problems. So I'm gonna give you an example next of a multiplication problem that is not an area problem, but that you can still use the partitioning rectangle strategy for. So let's say Jake rode his bike four miles a day for 39 days, and we wanna know how many miles he rode in all. So the multiplication problem that we are solving is 39 times four equals m. I'm gonna draw my rectangle. I'm gonna write the four over here on the side, and then I'm gonna think about my other factor of 39. Um, you can do this several ways. Um, students in fourth grade at this point in the year should have their extended facts known as well. So an extended fact is, let's say a child has memorized four times three. The product of that is 12. If it's four times 30, you would simply add a zero to the previous factor of 12 to make it 120. So if I'm solving 39 times four, I have my first factor of four on the left-hand side, and I'm going to partition my rectangle here, and I'm gonna write 30 here, and nine here. 30 and nine together equal my other factor. So like I was saying, this is an extended fact. Four times 30, sorry about the writing there again. It's not that easy to do. Four times 30 is 120. And then we have a basic math fact. Four times nine, giving us a product of 36. Then over here on the right, I'm going to add the 120 and 36. To get 156 miles. And there's my answer. Jake rode 156 miles altogether. So again, I'm gonna show you a different way to partition this rectangle. Um, but it's the same problem. Jake rode his bike four miles a day for 39 days. How many miles did he ride in all? So 39 times four is essentially what we're solving for. So I'm gonna draw another rectangle here. I'm gonna write a four over here. Another way to do this is by tens. How many tens are there in 39? That's what we need all together. There are three tens plus another nine. So I'm gonna do this. I've got four sections. This first section is 10, 10, 10, and nine. All together, those total 39. I can write the pluses in between, but you don't have to. And I'm going to do my multiplication now and solve for each of the factors and write that in inside each of the rectangles. Four times 10, equals 40. Same problem here. I'm just going to write 40 again, 40 again, and 4 times 9 for the last one is 36. Over to the right, I'm going to write all of those factors. 40, 40, 40, 36. I add them all together and I get the same answer, 156 miles total. Uh, just so you know, parents, it, these rectangles do not need to be drawn to scale. So I've got three tens and a nine, but if you notice, uh, obviously I'm having a difficult time writing clearly on this screen, um, but my nine rectangle is actually larger than the, th the three ten rectangles, and that absolutely does not matter. So again, these rectangles don't need to be drawn to scale. 
Okay, I hope this helps and thank you again for watching. Thank you.